Hello. Hi guys. Welcome to our final video of this seven day segment. Uh, we're really excited about this video because it's going to be a summary of everything, of our feelings about the trip, uh, things that we learned, things that we want to do differently next time, and any information we can give you guys to help you on your future journeys. Yeah. So uh, with that, let's get started. Well, yeah. How was the trip for you? I would summarize the trip as being a great success. We did a lot of things very differently from most people who make this journey across an ocean. We used different equipment. Uh, we're very minimalistic, so we have our electric motor and our synthetic rigging. It was something that was new. It was something that's never been tried before, and we didn't know how it would go, honestly. we. We guessed it would go well or else we would never have done it, um, but we're extremely proud. I'm proud of what we accomplished. We saw wildlife, uh, we experienced some, we experienced all kinds of weather, all ranges of weather, yep. and it took us 24 days to get from Bermuda to the Azores, which is really the segment that we see as the crossing. Yeah. The other um, part was just getting to Bermuda. Yeah. To get uh, across. And since we had crew at that time, uh, it wasn't just us and things were a little different. So the segment from Bermuda to the Azores was really what we consider to be the crossing, the Atlantic crossing, um, because it was the longest trip and we feel really good having done it, just the two of us yep. as a team. It brought us closer <laughs> and um, gave us lots of time to reflect on yep. life and ourselves and figure out who we are. And I mean, plan for the future. Yeah. And... We learned all about ourselves as a couple and as individuals. I mean, 24 days at sea is a long time to have nothing but thoughts and conversations with no internet. Uh, <laughs> it was good. I would say it was wonderful. It was rewarding. I enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy all of it. But... <laughs> I enjoy the fact that we did it. <laughs> yeah. What about you? Well, for me, it was uh, kind of the realization of a really long dream. Mm -hmm. So back when I was in dental school, I, I wanted to do this trip. And like for four years, I read about sailing and read about ocean crossing. And like just it's all I thought about in my free time. And then I graduated, bought the boat. And then for the next you know, two years before I met you, I was just working on the boat to get it ready to take her across an ocean. So, you know, it was, when you think about it, 10 years of preparation and just dreaming of doing this. <laughs> and then we were out there and I was so happy while we were out there. And then when we finally made it to the Azores, it was just like, <laughs> it was amazing. Just that so, feeling, yeah. that feeling of seeing Corvo, that first island that we saw. Oh. Oh wow. my gosh. It There's like, nothing that can it's like, replace that feeling. Not replacing the feeling, but to give you an idea what it's like, it's like the beginning of Jurassic Park where it's just like they're <laughs> flying and they're out in the ocean and then just this giant lush green <laughs> island comes out of the ocean. You're like, wow! Like, because we were a month pretty much mm -hmm. with no land. Like, everywhere you looked, every direction, it was water and clouds and sunsets. It was a lot of stars. the same. <laughs> A lot of the same thing every day. <laughs> yeah. And then like all of a sudden there's land. Mm -hmm. it, it's, <sighs> it's an incredible feeling. I mean, I feel so blessed that I was given the opportunity to understand what it's like to live so minimalistically and to overcome such a challenge, such an obstacle and to experience things that most people in this world never get to experience, like the stars, the stars at night, just in the middle of the ocean. There's no other place you can get that. Yeah. And we can't even explain like, it. Like, like the like, darkest place in the States, you'll have no light pollution, but still there's land formations and trees and stuff yeah. that'll obstruct the sky. Like here, it's, it's like being in a planetarium, actually. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's a perfect 360 degree view that's totally unobstructed. It is. I mean, it's insane. And, <laughs> it's it's unreal. Yeah, and watching the moon change its phases, mm -hmm. like, it used to be for me that every once in a while I'd look up at the sky and be like, oh, the moon. <laughs> and that was it. It's like, it, it has such a new meaning to us because mm -hmm. we watched all the cycles of the moon happen. And it's... 
It was magical. Magical, yeah. Mm-hmm. Magical. Mystical, uh, magical. And just another cool thing. So when you're out there, you're, you are the visitor. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we saw, there was one, it was a white marlin that was fishing. We weren't fishing. It was fishing. It came by the boat and was just swimming along and, you know, going for fish. I was like, that's so cool. The wildlife, I mean, we, we were in their habitat. We yeah. were in their element. I mean... They came by because they wanted to, not because they were in an aquarium, have mm-hmm. nowhere to go, and were just like, ooh, look at the fish. <laughs> um, it was also... Oh, stop. It was also <laughs> extremely weird. It, it gave us a different um, understanding of this earth. Uh, yeah. Relying completely on the elements of water and wind and having three miles of water below our keel in the shallow parts at any given time was just it made you think differently um it it made you understand this planet or understand how much we don't understand if that makes sense Um, and also like how insignificant we are yeah like we were the only thing above the water for the entire visible horizon like it was humbling yeah but and not then, in a bad way no, like in a really was, good way yeah I and mean, you're out there you're <laughs> you are the most alone yeah on that tiny little boat and it was really impacting whenever we'd go up to the bow and look back it's like this is this is it our this world. is all we have yeah and, we are limited. <laughs> and you're you're totally alone on the ocean and then at night with the stars you're like the only thing in this incredible yeah. vastness it's, that's just forever. It's it's not it doesn't make you feel small in a really bad way. It makes you feel small in that a cosmic way. Yeah, and you're just, you know, this tiny little part. And a lot of people talk about that um but it's not something that you can really fully understand until you're out there. And so yeah. having the opportunity to have that understanding and have that kind of epiphany. and Especially at a young age. Yeah. It was very impacting. And I will never forget it. Ever. Yeah. It's, so. it's more a change of mind and heart than a realization. Like, yeah. it, it's just, it changes how I view things now. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone should have that. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know what else, else to, to say. <laughs> Everyone should have that. Uh, and it's a feeling of comfort to know that we, we as humans, you know, individuals have such a small part in this world. I think yeah. that's something that more humans should understand. No, no. <laughs> anyway. Um... As far as the trip on a whole, we felt very one with nature and one with the world. Um, We were uh, very... At its mercy. At its mercy, exactly. I was going to say out of control, but that's not right. We were at its mercy. Like, what we did depended on the weather, depended on the currents, depended on the water, depended on the wind, and we reacted to it. Um, Mm -hmm. Everything we did was because of the natural occurrences around us. We had no control over those, over that nature. Yeah. Um, which is really a different feeling because, you know, on land, a lot of culture these days is about controlling nature. Humans control over nature. If a garden is overgrown, you'll clip it back. You know, it, it's, you can, you have a level of control in, on on land that you just don't have when you're out there in the water in the wind and in that way it's also very humbling I think that we just we don't have that control and yeah. that was comforting in a weird way um, because it kind of took the pressure off of us <laughs> it was like we were just responding so it's difficult to surmise in in such a small segment of time but it was a very impacting trip so that's how we feel about it um what we learned we learned a lot yeah so before this trip i've been reading and studying and planning for it for well 
10 years. Just being out there, you learn what actually works mm -hmm. and things that a lot of people talk about that aren't a thing. There's a huge emphasis on getting weather faxes out at sea. They're like, that's so important for safety and all this. No, don't waste your time. Go take some classes, learn how to read the weather yourself, and then you'll be fine. And we talked about that more in depth in a previous video, as you yeah. know. Um, so we won't go into it too much now, but that was a big thing that we learned. Yeah. Um, and then another big thing was just learning that you can go anywhere you want. So if the weather is not good and it's not a comfortable angle to be sailing on, change course a little bit. It's not going to make a big difference. The 1,800 miles that we had to go from Bermuda to the Azores, we ended up sailing 2,200, <laughs> which sounds like a lot because we sailed an extra 400. But in reality, it's it wasn't that big a difference. Like we were pretty much on course. And most because of the, time. of the changes we made in course, uh, we actually got further faster. Yeah, because and we more made those changes for a reason. Yeah. Personally, but, I learned a ton about the boat itself. I think both of us got a lot more fluid with how we handle the boat, like simple things like sail changes and any kind of changes we made throughout the day, we did much more fluidly and it got faster and faster as we went on. So like I became completely confident up on the bow doing sail changes, um, yeah. doing things like that because I had the opportunities. Like Herbie, I would say, I'm going to do this one. And Herbie would be like, okay. <laughs> and I'd sit back Go ahead. and she'd do yeah. it. I wanted to get more and more proficient and I really did. It's amazing how much like repetition in gaining a further understanding on how everything works on the boat. I gained more of an understanding of sailing in general um, and the physics of it which is really very important to me. I mean, Herbie understood that already with all of his reading and education yeah. and stuff like that, but I was still not quite as there as he was. And now I feel like I'm really on a level playing ground. Mm -hmm. And I think that's super important. Another big thing for me, like for example, I, I designed the sale plan. So I chose what each sale would be, how it was cut and where its center of effort would be because that's how I am. Uh, <laughs> but when you put that into practical applications of the winds of this, we're heading in this direction, which sail to have, just those little tiny nuances. Like now it's like second nature. Like mm -hmm. there's no question what sail we're going to put where and when. Yeah. And then for the sail switching, taking down the head sails was always a little tricky for me. Uh, and we'd work together, but like a sheet would fall in the water and like it's, it wasn't going as seamless. And Oof. Early on in the trip, we were good at that. We like, were. Pitch black darkness. I'd go up on the bow and like I'd be lowering it. And then when she'd see the clue get to a certain part, she'd release the sheets. And, like, it just went. It was like a symphony. Yeah. It just it was great. went so well. Yeah. I so, mean, it's so important that you develop that kind of understanding of your vessel. It's like second nature to you. Yeah. For being out in the ocean, just the subtle nuances on the settings to put the motor to get the most regen out of it. Like now, I I can set that sucker up really well, and we're getting all of our power came from the electric motor. Mm -hmm. So when people tell us that you need a diesel because all these long reasons, uh, one of the common ones is you need a motor that way you can run your alternator to charge your batteries. Well, now we know 100% certain that for an ocean crossing, we can count on the regen of the electric motor. Now right. coastal sailing, not so much. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel so much better going forward now. Like. We have a lot of big plans. Yeah. Um, and, and we'll talk about those at the end of this video. We're yeah. excited to tell you about them. <laughs> yeah, because when we started this trip, our parents were actually really scared for us because we've never done anything like this. <laughs> so now that we've crossed the ocean, mm -hmm. it's we feel really good in being able to continue on because whenever we told people about our plans, they'd always say, oh, have you done this before? And obviously you haven't. We're young. I mean, yeah. <laughs> how have we crossed an ocean at our there age? There has to be a first time. Yeah, so uh, now now we got that. Yes, that's so. under our belts. We can yep. say we've done it. As for things we would do differently... Yes, gimbaled stove Yeah. with pot holders because I was the pot holder. <laughs> yeah, it's just small things. Honestly, most of what we did across, like, it was a very successful crossing, so there isn't a whole lot we would change. We would definitely not have crew. 
um, yeah. which we learned early on. So we got to do the main part of it without crew. Uh, and honestly, like as far as the electric motor, we do it again. The synthetic mm-hmm. rigging, we do it again. Like the major, major things that set us apart, um, that really made the trip possible, we would still do it the same way. I know that's not really satisfying. Like we would saying we would not really change anything, but no, we would, we'd change the stove, just the stove really. Yeah. Oh, and another big thing. So we're going with a gimbaled alcohol stove. And the reason we're not going with propane is every propane's nice and all and all these great things. But the problem is every country you go to has a different propane system. So when we got here, our, our Australian friends, the first thing they were doing was trying to figure out how to get propane for their boat yeah. to be adapted. Where the first thing we did was go get ice cream in the showers because <laughs> we stunk. <laughs> <laughs> now we're really excited to tell you our next step. We are going to be here in the Azores for the entire winter. We have a lot of work to do on the boat. We are going to be refitting our galley, which we're super excited about. I, I don't think we've mentioned that yet. So, surprise, we're refitting yeah. our galley. Um, we just got the wood today. Yes. So, <laughs> you'll be hearing about that a lot. And um, we'll be sightseeing and just traveling throughout the islands and fixing minor things on the boat. And? And what? Repainting the entire boat. Oh, yeah, that's the big thing. Yes. We're going to be making her beautiful. Yeah. So, we're super excited for that. And so then... the top sides are getting repainted. Yeah. We're repainting the deck. Yeah. Yeah. It's really exciting. Um, <laughs> so you'll you'll see all of that in action. And then our trip is so far from over. Yeah, uh, we're just starting. Yeah, we have a lot to look forward to. Starting in um, probably June, we're going to be heading all the way across the Atlantic. <laughs> to mainland Portugal. To Portugal. And from Portugal, we're going to be going into the Mediterranean. So we're going to do Spain... France, Italy, Italy, and Greece. Those are our main... um, And maybe Turkey. Maybe Turkey. We'll see how things are there. Yeah, we have a lot of big plans for Europe. And we're so excited about that. The Mediterranean is incredible. We can't wait to sail it. And then we're going to come out of the Med and do the Canary Islands. And the Cape Verde. Cape Verde. Yep. Possibly Madeira. Maybe. Maybe not. (laughs) We'll play bigger. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to cross back and do the Caribbean. So there's so much to look forward to. Our trip is just in the beginning. And guys, we are so happy to have you along with us for the ride. I mean, yeah. having this YouTube channel has been incredible. So please make sure that you share us with your friends because we want to reach as many people as possible with our story. And it's always great to have as much communication with other sailors as possible because we are learning this whole way through. Yeah, everything we do is learning. Mm -hmm. And even stuff we've done over and over again, we're still learning. Yeah. And the really nice thing, especially when we reach more people, is then we get more feedback. So someone will suggest, oh, try this. Like something as simple as when I was filling our alcohol stove that's not gimbaled. I had this like crazy contraption to fill it without making any drips. And someone's like, oh, just take a turkey baster. <laughs> I had uh, this. Uh. So, yes. Yeah. Please comment. Let us know tips, tricks, just suggestions, yeah. anything. It, we, we read all the comments. Yes, we read them all. And we love connecting with you. So, you are a huge part of this trip for us. And so, we love that you're along for the ride. Yeah. And the YouTube also feeds in with the Patreon and between those two, that's really what makes this trip possible. Exactly. So, like, our budget is exceedingly low. We spend about $500 a month. And and that $500 comes mostly from you guys. Um, yeah. And so that's how we're able to provide you with these videos that hopefully teaches you something either from our mistakes, s- mistakes <laughs> or our successes. Yep. So big thank you to all of you. And yep. we're going to get back to our regular schedule now. So every Sunday. And then uh, we're enjoying these little Thursday do-it-yourself videos. So we're going to keep those up. Please give us any kind of suggestions that you have for those. Um, what you want to hear from us. And we really do take that into consideration. Yep. So 
Thank yeah. you. So be sure to subscribe, and mm -hmm. thank you so much.